Hello all, uh, on to part two. Um, you don't know this, this is actually take four. I had to get rid of some takes because my roommate thought that um, Tunisian people being blasted with a water cannon was <laughs> something to laugh about. Sexual. And so, yeah, okay, let's move on. So um, let's get, let's, let's steer, now that we've covered Tunisia, um, let's turn once again to the TB303 and to the, the um, Chicago house music scene. Um, so... Let's see, where were we? Last time we were here, we talked about what a TB303 is and how we're going to build one and all the little parts that go into it. Um, and today we're going to focus on building the most annoying of those parts, deciding whether or not we're going to uh, legato. That is to say, when we ask to play a pitch, play a new note at one pitch, whether or not we're going to jump to that pitch or slide into that pitch from the previous note. And to do that, we're going to slide, uh, we've arbitrarily decided that we're going to legato any time uh, we're given a note on before receiving the note off for the previous note. Um, that would be very easy to detect, were it not for the fact that in MIDI you can get uh, simultaneous messages out of order. So say we were playing one note and then we got a note off for that note just as we were getting a note on for the next note. Now what's really happening is we've stopped playing one note and started playing the other note at the same time and so what we should do in that case uh, is not legato. However, it's not impossible that we will first get the message for the new note on and then the note off. Uh, because in MIDI I, all right, so a uh, quick digress, a little rant slash digression. I don't know if you know this, but MIDI is actually the probably the worst interprocess communication protocol there is. Um, it's a really antiquated way of doing things, um, and it hasn't been replaced by anything better. Um, I don't know, maybe because people, I, well, we could go on and on, but the point being that one of the drawbacks to MIDI is that there's no such thing as simultaneous events. Everything has to happen sequentially. And so when you get two events at the same time, the whatever MIDI driver it is arbitrarily decides which one comes first, and when you're writing uh, software that deals with MIDI, you have to pick which one you want to, you have to write your code as if it didn't matter, the order they come in. Um, and so that's how what we're going to have to do here. And to do that, what we're going to do is uh, delay every note that we play, every note on, by five milliseconds. And in that five milliseconds, we're waiting for note offs uh, that might come. So that we're never in the case where we play, start a note on, thinking that, uh, thinking that we should legato when we actually shouldn't. That's what we're trying to avoid. So anyway, now that we've described that, um, in great detail and wasted a huge amount of time, let's actually do it. Um, so to do that, the first thing that we need to do is when we get a note on, uh, delay it by five milliseconds. And the way to do that is by using the pipe object. Um, pipe is a sweet little object that just delays by five milliseconds whatever it gets in its left inlet. Um, so let's see, out of mini parse here, here comes the note, uh, trigger list list. So the first thing we do is send that note out the right inlet here, uh, sorry, right outlet here. And what, okay, so uh, there's a little trick here, which is that pipe actually won't accept a list as an argument. It has to have a symbol. Uh, so we're going to use the two symbol object with the attribute separator slash. And this may seem strange, and it is, but so what all the two symbol does is take a list and uh, add a separator symbol between every item of that list and output one big chunk. So you'll see what I mean. If you give it uh, the list 1060, um, it'll output 10 slash 60. And so you can see all it is is inserting that character between every space in the list. Um, there's a corresponding object from symbol, and we're going to use that right after pipe, from symbol at separator. Um, and all that's doing is just uh, going right back to where we started. And now that we've done that, um, I'm just going to throw a trigger list 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 down here because what we want is on the right hand here, all the way over here, we're going to detect if there are any um, note offs, I'm sorry, note ons, and so we should legato. The middle here is where we actually play the note, and then the left here is where we report that a note is being played. More on that later, but for now I'm just doing that so that we can grab this whole chunk here and push um, Command Shift E for encapsulate, and that just takes that whole big chunk of nonsense and crushes it down into a sub patcher. And if you double click this, here's the sub patcher with that two symbol pipe from symbol. Um, 
So that's out of the way. We don't have to deal with it. So subpatching, encapsulating like this is sort of a double-edged sword because it, while it is really cool and saves you a lot of space and makes your patches look really slick, and now we can name this whatever we want. We can name it Delay 5, which is what it does. Um, and it's a much, it, it's named something that actually makes sense. But also now if we have a problem with something in here, um, we're kind of hosed. Uh, or as... Um, as people might say, uh, boned. So if you don't want to get boned, what you have to do is make sure that try to you have to try to debug early and often. Um, so before you encapsulate anything, uh, yeah, before you encapsulate anything, uh, make sure that you're not going to bone yourself because no one wants to bone themselves. Um, that's not true. So we've done that. Um, the next thing, now that we've done that, what we want to do is detect if we've got a note on, and that's dead simple. Um, to do that, all we're going to do is when we get a note on, um, so notes, note ons look like a frequency followed by a velocity that is non-zero. So I'm going to unpack the frequency and velocity here and um, just do a greater than zero. So that'll be one whenever the velocity is greater than zero, which is to say it's a note on, and then do cell one, message one, and send that to this toggle here. And now this will be on whenever uh, there's a note on. Um, also, when we get a note on, well, you know, this isn't the best way to do this. All right, I'm gonna delete this <laughs> new plan. We're gonna use strip note. Um, strip note just takes and uh, frequency and velocity, uh, MIDI and velocity, MIDI frequency and MIDI velocity, and filters for the um, uh, filters for note ons only. So whenever we get a note on, we'll get that value reported out of here, um, and turn on this toggle box. Also, what we're going to do is set that frequency to be the right into the right inlet of this equals box. And whenever, now whenever we get a note off, we'll check if, we're, if we currently have a note on for that note off. And if we do, turn the note off. So coming out of here, we're going to have a note, uh, another, um, another MIDI frequency and velocity. So we do unpack ii. And out of the, um, uh, so we'll make a gate one zero. Um, and we're looking for velocities that are equal to zero, so we'll do uh, equals equals no, cell zero and then one. This is getting, I hope this isn't too confusing. So what you, what's going on here is whenever we get a note off, so whenever this is zero and this is a note off, um, we're going to bang on this message box and put a one into this gate here, which opens this gate up, which allows this frequency value to come through, which then goes into this equals box. And um, so what this means is that whenever we get a note off, uh, we check if it's equal to the note, the frequency of the note on that we're currently playing. Um, and then down here, if that's equal to one, which is to say if they are equal, send a zero to this toggle box. Um, anytime I describe a match, max patch, it always becomes an endless string of, and then this does this. It's always like this Rube Goldberg machine kind of thing. But now you'll see when we play this MIDI sequence, this will be uh, open whenever there's a note on. See, look, look at that. They were totally justified in giving me that degree. All right, so we're gonna grab all of that uh, this entire thing here and encapsulate it. Boom. Done. Never have to look at it again. That's so not true. This is it's really the worst way to code. Never, never, no, no, do this. Do this is good. So grab that whole thing, encapsulate it, and rename it um, is note on. And now we've tested it. It works. All we have to do is remember that that's what that little piece does. Uh, so we're getting there. We're almost there. Now the hardest part. So the, the thing we need to do now is actually detect uh, when we get a note on, or when we get a note, rather, um, whether or not we need to do the, do the legato. Um, so the way we're going to do that, we know that we need to have a legato when we get a note on and there's already a note on. 
Um, so we'll make another unpack integer integer here, take it out of this outlet, um, and what we're looking for here are note ons. So we'll do greater than zero coming out of this outlet here, which is the frequency. Um, cell one. And then what I'm going to do is take the output of this toggle box and send it to an, an integer here. And we're going to um, bang out the value of this integer box and select for when that's one. So a note on comes through here. We bang on this integer box. If it's one, we're going to get a one out here and we're going to get a bang here. So this little button should flash anytime we get a note on and there's already a note on. Um, and if you, I don't know if you can hear it in this MIDI sequence, um, but there's two times where that should happen. I'll, I'll say them as they happen. How much time do we have left? Oh my God, none. All right, well, anyway, listen. You'll hear two slurs. One there, and another there. <laughs> Shut up. Um, I don't know if you know my roommate, but he's a tool. So uh, you, should, you should see this flash anytime those slurs happen. Ah, did you see? Did you see? It's not right. Um, it's actually flashing anytime a note, oh no, stuck note, anytime a note on and note off happen at the same time. Uh, so exactly what we were worried about happening is happening. We're getting note ons before note offs. Um, <clears throat> so all we have to do to fix that is just make another integer box here um, that um, holds on to the value that comes out of this integer box. And we're going to take... Now whenever we get this delayed note, the first thing we're going to do, the very first thing we're going to do, is bang on um, this integer box and report that value. Which is to say, should we slur this note or not? And that's what's going to go into our bang here. And now what's happening is um, we're waiting until we're about to play the note to see if we should actually uh, get the note on, or see if we should actually legato, if there were, was already a note on. And the other thing we have to do is add in a cell zero here for this toggle box um, and send the message zero to this integer box. This is, I can, I'm can just, I've done this like 13 times and messed it up 13 times and it's confusing the hell out of me. Um, so all that's happening here is uh, if we get a note on, that's this branch here, check if there's already a note on, and if there is, write a one to this uh, box here. If anytime we get a note off, write a zero to this box here. When it comes time to finally play a note, bang on this integer box here and see what we've got. And <coughs> if it's a one, slur into the next note. And now we should hear those, see those bangs only when we uh, expect to. Look at that. I mean, it wasn't exactly, we didn't do the traveling salesman problem, but I think that was pretty damn cool. So um, to wrap up, grab that entire massive, painful, you know, you could, well, just grab all this and now control or command shift E and then we'll encapsulate once again. And now we're just doing should slur. And that's it. Um, it takes the bang in here to determine when you actually want to query it. It takes note ons here. It takes um, notes ons, note offs and ons here, note ons here. And it tells you when you should slur. Um, and that's it. We finished this should we legato part. Uh, so <clears throat> that was by far the hardest part. We're well on our way. Um, thanks for watching. I hope that, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I can't really tell you I have no I have no hope for this video. This is a hopeless video. Um, I hope one day soon that we make it to the end and get some awesome sound. And I hope it's actually helpful for you in some way. So thanks for watching and have a have a delicious candy cane day. Now stop this video.